Good morning. I want to welcome you to Christ United Methodist Church this morning. As we begin, I want to call your attention to a, well, actually, let's pray first, shall we? Precious Lord, we have come before you on this beautiful day with appreciation in our hearts. God, we thank you for allowing us to be in your presence and to worship. Lord, as we uh, begin this service, we pray your blessing upon our lives. Fill us with your Holy Spirit and let your presence be felt here among us. Open our hearts and our minds to receive your word this day. And may you help us worship you in spirit and truth. May all that we do be for your glory. For it's in the, G the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. I want to welcome you to Christ United Methodist Church this morning. As we begin, I want to call your attention to a few things. In your pew back pockets, you'll notice that there are prayer concern cards. If you have a prayer concern that you'd like to lift up this morning in worship, let me invite you to fill out that card. You can place it in the offering plate as it comes by later in the service. Uh, if, you're, um, uh, if you are a guest with us this morning, welcome. Uh, let me invite you to fill out one of our guest uh, cards. These are the ones with the blue rim around it. You can place either of these cards in the uh, in the offering plate as it comes by later in the service, or of course you can hand it to me in the receiving line following our service today. Uh, this morning in worship, there's going to be a clipboard that's going to come around, uh, and it's for our sign-up sheet for our uh, taco night. We're going to be doing those uh, same uh, activities that we've done through the summer uh, over the last two summers. Uh, we're going to be doing uh, again this summer. And so we're going to start up with the taco night, uh, and that's going to be on June 5th. And so I'm going to go ahead and pass this around today during worship. If you would, fill out something uh, so we can be in fellowship together. At this time, I want to invite you to still your hearts and minds as uh, Blythe leads us in our prelude this morning. Please join me in the call. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Please join me in the call to worship. O Holy Trinity, one God in three persons. 
we behold in the splendor of creation your majesty and responsibility. O Holy Trinity, one God in three persons. We behold in the face of Jesus Christ your divinity and our humanity. O Holy Trinity, one God in three persons. We behold in the spirit of truth your glory and our calling. Bound to you forever, we will ever praise your name. At this time, I want to invite you to stand and join me for our song of worship, The Lily of the Valley. Words are going to be on the monitors. Let us stand and sing at this time. I have found a friend in Jesus. He's everything to me. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. The lily of the valley, in him alone I see. All I need to cleanse and make me fully whole. In sorrow he's my comfort, in trouble he's my stay. He tells me every care on him to roll. He's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star is the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. He all my grief has taken and all my sorrows borne. In temptation he's my strong and mighty tower. I've all for him forsaken and all my idols torn from my heart and now he keeps me by his power. Through all the world forsake me, and Satan tempt me sore. Through Jesus I shall safely reach the goal. He's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. He will never, never leave me, nor yet forsake me here. While I live by faith and do his blessed will. Oh, wall of fire above me, I've nothing now to fear. With his manna he my hungry soul shall fill. Then sweeping up to glory to see his blessed face, where rivers of delight shall ever roll. He's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Triune God, within your own life, there is mutuality, equality, and unity in diversity. Though, Though we are made in your image, we confess that we distort the triune nature. Instead of seeking mutual and common good, we common seek our good. own gain. We seek our own gain. Instead of living in equality, justice, and respect, we construct systems that are unjust. We devise ways to elevate ourselves over others and disrespectful thoughts words and actions still surface in us. We allow differences to divide us and lead us to brokenness. Holy God, forgive us. Restore in us and in our life together the divine that you in. Make us tender in mutuality. Make us generous in equality. Make us grateful in diversity. We pray to be one with you and one another through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Friends, we are still standing in the grace of Christ because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. We are free. We are set free to love God and neighbor and to work for reconciliation of the world. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. And as a forgiven and reconciled people, let us greet each other in Christian love this morning as we pass the peace.
Pete be with y'all? may be seated if the ushers have come forward for our morning's tithes and offerings. All right, Nancy, if you'd lead us in our offertory prayer. Holy God, you have poured out so much for us, the beauty of the world, the care of family and friends, meaningful labor, and the gift of the church. We give you thanks for these and many other gifts. Most especially, we thank you for pouring out your love in our, into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. These offerings, may your love spill over in, in abundance and that relief for no hope to those who in Christ's renewal. <laughs> in God's name, we pray, amen.
be seated. Um, be before I start our prayer today, I have a reminder for you. Um, we have asked for information on anyone in your family who might be graduating, and that list will be in our bulletin next week. We're going to have a time of recognition and prayer. So if any of you um, have graduates who would like to be part of that service, they are welcome to come in cap and gown and join Dustin up front for that time of prayer. And of course, we'll be holding all of our graduates in our prayers today. Now let us pray. Most holy God, we come before you this day, humbly seeking loving communion with you and all gathered here. Quiet all thoughts that might distract us, that we might enter into joyful worship here on this holy ground. We give you thanks, O God, for the world which you made and renewed by the power of Jesus' resurrection. Make us wise and careful of your gifts as we live on earth. Just now, make us all aware of natural disasters that are impacting our country, tornadoes, torrential rains, flooding. Today, especially protect all places in the path of destructive wildfires, wherever they rage out of control, and in the aftermath, Bless those who restore and rebuild. We pray for your grace, peace, and protection for all of our brothers and sisters facing the destruction of wildfires, tornadoes, and flooding. Those who make their homes in those places, those whose livelihood is in those places, and those who travel from near and far to put their lives on the line to help with control and evacuation. For the Bluetooth fire near Rio Doso and Alto, Lord, I especially pray today for favorable weather conditions that will allow the slurry planes to fly where needed and the flames to not spread so rapidly. We lift up the sick and those who suffer from anxiety or depression or grief from chronic illness or pain. Today, we continue to lift up Ed Dresner, Mary Kay Garcia, and Pastor Dustin's Uncle Ed. For those who struggle to pay rent or a mortgage, for those who have no home, for those who are neglected and abused in our community, for people who long for family and instead are alone, for children who do not have a good guide to raise them up, and for whatever you see, holy God, that our world, our community might need, grant us the wisdom and resources and the will to reach out through your love to help those in need. For all those needs still unnamed but placed before you now, we seek your wise counsel and your loving care in a moment of silence. For the leaders of this church, for all churches, regardless of denomination or tradition, Help us to realize that we all bow down before the same God, the same Christ, the same Holy Spirit, and that we have so much more in common than those things that would seek to divide us. We pray for our children and youth, for those who are celebrating graduations, for the elderly whose wise counsel is still so sorely needed and for all loving endeavors that seek to bring us closer to each other and to you. Grant us your wisdom and guidance. Be with our church 
and all those in our conference and those everywhere who will be in a time of leadership transition, giving us all a spirit of prayerful listening and learning. This morning, we ask your blessing on Pastor Dustin as he brings us your message, and that as he speaks, we are listening and hearing your word through him. We pray that the love which passes ceaselessly between the Father and the Son in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit may renew and deepen each one of us here and worshiping with us online, and that you draw us all into your unending life as we seek to bring about your kingdom in this world. Into your hands, we entrust all that is of concern this day, sure that you hear our every prayer and every joy. We pray all this in the name of the Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Emma here today. So, and William. Oh, and there's more. So, yeah. How are you guys? Good. It's awesome to see you. Okay. You can have a little seat up here with me. Have something in the bag I'm gonna hand out in just a minute but you have to wait so I want to ask you guys a question have you ever been wrong about something and then later on you learned the truth and you had to change your mind about it yes yeah when when was that Emma um, I forget okay that's okay how about you? Yes. Did, did, can, was there a time you, you thought something, but then you le learned later it wasn't true? Yes. Yeah, okay. Well, there was a man named Saul. Everybody say Saul. Saul. Okay. There was a man named Saul, and he believed in God. So that's a really good thing, right? 
he believed in God and he wanted to do what God wanted him to do. But you see, he thought something, he had a wrong belief about who Jesus was. He did not believe that Jesus was God and he was really upset with the people that believed that Jesus is God. Yeah? And so what do you think he did? He put a bunch of them in jail. He found the Christians and he put them in jail. That wasn't very nice, was it? But he thought he was doing a good thing, right? He, um, one day, he was going to a city to find Christians to put in jail and something amazing happened. A really, really bright light shone all around him and all the other people that were traveling with him. And they all heard a voice. They heard a voice call out from the bright light. And it said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And Saul answered, Who are you, Lord? He was he was scared. And the voice said, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. Saul fell to the ground, and when he stood up, he couldn't see anything. So I have something in this bag, so we can kind of see what that might be like. Okay. So these, these are sleep masks. You want to put one on? Yeah. Have you ever seen one of these? Yeah. No? You put it on over your eyes so you can't see. You want to do that? Here, you want to pass those down? OK. So yeah, she's got it right. Can you see anything? No? OK. That's, so that's how Saul felt for three days, for three whole days, he couldn't see anything. Um, so while he was blind like that for three days, God, uh, Jesus, Jesus who is God, he spoke to another man named Ananias and told him to go and pray for Saul so that he'd be able to see again. And so that's what Ananias did. He, he went over to where Paul was staying and he prayed for him. Now, guess what? Saul believed in Jesus. He believed. Now he believed that Jesus really is God. And God also changed Saul's name. Do you know what his new name was? It rhymes with Saul. Paul? That's absolutely right. God changed Saul's name to Paul. And Paul, who used to be Saul, became a great teacher. And he traveled to many, many places telling people about Jesus and how Jesus died and rose from the dead so that we can all be rescued from the power of sin and death. And we can live with God the Father, God the Son, who's Jesus, and God the Holy Spirit forever and ever. So it's very important that we know who Jesus really is. Jesus is God the Son. Jesus is God. Right? Okay. Shall we pray? Let's pray. Jazz hands. One, two, three. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, and Holy Spirit, we pray to you today. We thank you so much that you are God, that all, all three of you are God, even though we don't understand how three can be one, but we know that that's true because your word tells us that is true. Lord God, we love you so much. We thank you for telling us who Jesus really is. And we thank you for changing Saul's life 
and showing him the truth. Lord, we pray that if there's any areas in our lives, any things that we might think are true that really aren't true, that you would show us that, that you would reveal your truth to us and set us free. And we pray these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. If you want to take a nap, sometimes people wear these when they take naps in the daytime so that it blocks the light out and it helps them sleep better. So you can have those if you want. You're welcome. <laughs> Our scripture reading this morning is Acts 9, verses 1 through 9. Meanwhile, Saul was uttering threats with every breath and was eager to kill the Lord's followers. So he went to the high priest. He requested letters addressed to the synagogues in Damascus and for their cooperation, I'm sorry, for their cooperation in the rest of the the way he found. He wanted to bring them to men and women back to Jerusalem in chains. As he was approaching Damascus on this mission, a light from heaven shone down around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. And the voice replied, I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. Now get up, go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men with Saul stood speechless, for they heard the sound of someone's voice but saw no one. Saul picked himself up off the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he was blind. So his companions led him by the hand to Damascus. He remained there blind for three days and did not eat or drink. Now there was a believer in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord spoke to him in a vision calling Ananias. Yes, Lord, he replied. The Lord said, go over to Straight Street, to the house of Judas. When you get there, ask for the for a man from Tarsus named Saul. He is praying to me right now. I have shown him a vision of a man named Ananias coming in and laying hands on him so he can see again. But Lord, explained Ananias, I have heard many people talk about the terrible things this man has done to the believers in Jerusalem. And he is authorized by the leading priest to arrest everyone who calls upon your name. But the Lord said, go, for Saul is my chosen instrument to take my message to the Gentiles and to the kings, as well as to the people of Israel. And I will show him how much he must suffer for my name's sake. So Ananias went and found Saul. He laid his hands on him and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road, has sent me so that you might again regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Instantly, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes, and he regained his sight. Then he got up and was baptized. Afterwards, he ate some food and regained his strength. Saul stayed with the believers in Damascus for a few days. For the gift of scriptures, we give thanks. Thanks be to God. Amen.
if you'll join me in prayer. Holy Wisdom, you are the pillar of fire that leads us into each new moment of our lives. By the power of your Spirit, settle now into our hearts and illumine your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This morning, we continue to look at forgiveness. We have addressed our need to forgive how it can eat away at us, that it can strip us from the person that we are called to be. We have talked about how God's forgiveness and how Jesus Christ's actions on the cross defeat sin and the punishment of death. And then last week, we discovered the difficulties to work on forgiving others and recognizing that we are responding to God's grace when we do. But what happens after we forgive someone else? What happens when we are the ones who have done the most wrong? What happens when we are the ones who have to live with ourselves? A writer once put it this way, it's easier to forgive others because they don't live in my head. I'm certain that we have all had those feelings of, you deserve this, this is your fault. An internal nagging that goes beyond a standard feeling of guilt. You see, guilt is not necessarily a bad thing. The sense of guilt can call you back to repentance. But you see, guilt is only supposed to call you back to repentance. Guilt is not supposed to hold you hostage. It is not supposed to entrench itself within you and turn to shame. When I was a teenager, I was in this constant competition with a girl named Haley. And Haley and I didn't get along for many reasons. And because of that, we often would compete just to make little digs at each other. Well, one day our competition affected an innocent bystander. Haley was the kind of individual who would race through homework and race through tests in the classroom so that she could be the first one to finish and hand her paper in first. And I decided that I was going to show her up by turning my paper in first. So I rushed uh, through my paper as quickly as I could. I uh, cannot guarantee the answers were right, uh, but I was going to get done first, and that was the important thing. And, and I rushed through my paper, and as quick as I can, I finished it. And right as I finished it, Haley was getting up from her chair. I sprung to my feet. I raced to the teacher's desk. And once she realized it, she too began to race. Now, on the way to that teacher was another one of my classmates. She had just had her ACL repaired. And as Haley darted up there, I was right there with her. But my clumsy foot took the left crutch right out from under that young lady. And she began to cry in pain. And I felt dumb and I felt small. My friend Joey was dating her at that time. And not only was his girlfriend upset, Joey was furious. I personally could not believe that I had done that. And I felt so bad that my petty competition with Haley wound up hurting two of my dearest friends. And I was stressed. And I was angry at myself. Throughout that day, I kept thinking and focusing about the way I slammed into her crutch that caused her unneeded pain. I asked questions to myself. Did I mess up all the work that the surgeon had just did? had done on her knee. But the worry, the guilt, the shame, it, it didn't end there. It, it stayed with me. You know, sometimes I think that we can be our own biggest enemies. I think that we might 
think or overthink. We might wallow in our own sense of shame because of it. We might wallow in it so long that we might not get to the place that we actually need to get. You know, we stick with our sins. And we might even say that we are not of any worth. When we come to our scripture message this morning, we find Saul of Tarsus, who had been going throughout the land and he's been hunting down Christians. He was looking to kill off an entire movement. And he felt that this, that if this movement was to gain a foothold, it could very well destroy the Jewish community. So Saul went from community to community, finding individuals who recognized themselves as members of the way or the group identified as the followers of Jesus. Saul believed that he was doing the right thing. Saul had been taught in school from a young age what was right and what was wrong, and and he felt completely determined to protect his way of life and his way of community. And on the road to Damascus, as he was leading, uh, as he was heading out to, to search for more Christians, he encounters the Lord, the risen Lord Christ. Saul encounters Jesus as a bright and blinding light, asking the question, why, Saul, do you persecute me? The scriptures tell us that Jesus tells Saul to get up and to go into town. And this is where Saul will be told what to do. So Saul does just that and is there for three days without food or drink. And you see, I'd imagine that Saul is in one of the deepest pits of his life. Saul had been sinning against God. Saul had been sinning against the people who followed Jesus. And so he was there in need of forgiveness. Need of forgiveness from his neighbors, need from forgiveness from God, and I imagine he was there in need to encounter forgiveness for himself. I imagine as he was blind for those three days, he fought within his head and he wrestled with the sins that he had committed. I think Saul forgot who he was. Do we forget who we are? I think from time to time we forget to whom we belong. You see, we remember our sin. We remember our guilt. We remember our shame. And as I said earlier, guilt is not necessarily a bad thing. It is a thing that I think we need to have. It's a thing that it's that peace that brings us back to the cross. And it's where we uh, understand that our forgiveness actually comes from Christ. But you see, oftentimes, we think that the forgiveness that comes from Christ isn't for us. Perhaps it is for someone else. Because I have sinned too greatly. I have sinned too often. And because of that, God can't really forgive my sin. Whether we admit it or not, we often have a thought or a series of thoughts that can beat us down and leave us thinking that we are not good enough. That the actions of the cross can't wash away the things that I have done, for I am too far gone. And though we may receive that forgiveness from Christ, we don't really even wrestle with what it means to forgive ourselves. We allow that guilt to turn into shame. And then we see ourselves as less than humans. We can allow that guilt that we experience when we are hurt from someone else to turn into shame as well. And then we are living into the lie That we are experiencing. There's a Roman Catholic priest, his name's Father Henry Nowen, and he writes in his book, Life of the Beloved, he says, and and I think it speaks well uh, to these moments that we are in need of self forgiveness. He writes this 
In the midst of this painful reality, we must dare to reclaim the truth that we, that we are God's beloved, even when our world does not love. As long as we allow our parents, our siblings, our teachers, our friends, and our lovers to determine whether or not we are beloved, we are caught in the net of suffocating, of a suffocating world that accepts or rejects us according to its own agenda of effectiveness and control. The great spiritual battle begins when we regain our status as God's beloved. Long before any human being saw us, we were seen by God's loving eyes. Long before anyone heard us cry or laugh, we are heard by God who is all ears for us. Long before any person spoke to, spoke to us in the world, we were spoken to by the voice of eternal love. You see, if the cross... If the cross is good enough to defeat all of humanity's sins, it's good enough for yours. If you were the only one that ever existed, God would have given himself to you through Christ Jesus. And often we might make a habit of fishing with our own forgiveness. The act as uh, if you were, uh, that you had been given forgiveness, that you had given it to God to take care of, and in the, the, the next moment, you find yourself reeling back that guilt and shame, those feelings back in. Friends, we must understand that we are beloved, that we are beloved in God's eyes, that we, you and I, are more than our sin, that you and I are more than our wounds in the eyes of God. That we, you and I, are divinely inspired creatures. You see, for Saul, he wasn't just left there in his sin. Saul encountered forgiveness from God and forgiveness from the community that he was looking to eradicate. Ananias came to Saul and, and restored Saul's sight. And soon afterwards, Saul experienced a transformation and became one of the most uh, influence, if not the most, I would say the most influential of the apostles in Christian history. You see, Saul could have stayed in that place, grasping that his sin was too great, that his sin was too big, that his sin was too heavy to move forward with. And I imagine in those three days without food or water that it was difficult. I imagine that Saul wrestled there and Ananias's arrival, Saul truly did experience forgiveness, not only from the community, but also from himself. For my story, I, I wrestled with that moment over and over. I apologized after, and after I was told that it was okay, I still wrestled with it for a while, giving it up and then reeling it back in. And continuing to, to fish with our own grief and our own guilt and our own shame, we are perpetuating a cycle of self-punishment, a cycle of uncertainty that can manifest itself in a constant sense of self-unworthiness and excess excessive behavior. To fully understand forgiveness for oneself, we must stop. We must stop and recognize the problem, the sin in its most concentrated form, and that we need to name it, and that we need to repent of it. And in doing so, we must trust that we are God's beloved, and that we need to trust that God sees us, you and I, with loving eyes. That we must trust that God longs for us to return. You see, God doesn't expect or, or want us all to have it all together. God just wants us to turn towards God in all that we do. For us to leave 
the hurt that we hold against ourselves at the cross. And God wants us to trust, to trust that Christ's death was good enough for all. That Christ's death was good enough for all the hurt that we have caused others. And for us to trust that God's grace is there for us. For us to lean into God's arms. And most of all, to actually allow God into our hearts to heal all of those hurts those that we've caused others and those that we have continued to just fish with in our own lives. The things that we've done, the things that make us feel small, the things that make us feel less than. For God wants us to turn to God and give all of those things, all of our hurts to him so that we may be made whole. Amen. If you'll join me in our affirmation of faith today, it's printed in your bulletins. It's also on the, on the screen. You break in, O oh God, on the road. You break in, O oh God, exactly the way we do not believe. You break in, O oh God, and change everything. Why are your stories never mundane? Why can you not just leave us alone and go and transform somewhere else that is not, cer not as certain and sure of you. You just disrupt us and cause anxiety. We are not a people of change. You break in, O oh God, with a call. You break in, O oh God, with an invitation. You break in, O oh God, with the truth. Why do you wait for us to respond and never give up? Why do you speak into our souls the truth of how we live? Why do you keep goading us, provoking us, disturbing us with the truth? You break in, O oh God, with a new realm. You break in, O oh God, with a new world. You break in, O oh God, with intent for the future. You always are a a challenge to us and we dream of of that realm of yours we speak so often but what disturbs us most is how you want to get there through us your partners and companions with space enough for everyone even those who perse who persecute you by doing nothing god break again in again in your workers God, break in again and use the gifts we are to build your realm. God, break in again and change our world once more. So be it. Amen. At this time, I want to invite you to stand and join me for our final hymn this morning is uh, Just As I Am Without One Plea. Words are on the monitors. Let us stand and sing at this time. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come, I come, just as Oh! 
As I give the announcements this morning, I w- Sierra, I want to invite you up here because I heard you're not going to be here next week. So I want to pray for you before, before, I, before I dismiss everyone. And a couple of other uh, little uh, announcements that I have for you. Uh, remember that we have the uh, uh, taco uh, night. We had passed that sign-up sheet around earlier. Uh, let me go ahead and invite you to, to fill that out and to join us in our summer night activities uh, as we uh, prepare to do those uh, this summer, so please do that. Um, if you happen to glance into my office, you would have noticed that most of my books are down from the shelf and boxes are getting packed and all of that kind of stuff. And part of the reason I've done that this past week is that so my last few weeks with y'all, I can actually spend in relationship with y'all because I can't be in my office if I don't have anything to look at or or to do in there. So I want to go to coffee with you. I want to go to lunch with you. I want to go to dinner with you. Uh, call the office. Um, and, and let me know what you want to do. I am glad to meet you uh, across town. We can go to dinner, lunch, coffee. It doesn't matter. Again, I want to spend, want to spend some quality time in relationship with y'all uh, before I depart in June. And uh, Sierra, come up here. Congratulations. Now tell me um, what, what degree you just finished. Okay, a Bachelor's of Arts in Astronomy and a Bachelor's of Arts in Physics. Awesome, congratulations. Where'd you finish it at? (laughs) University of Colorado Boulder is where uh, Sierra is getting that degree from. Congratulations again, that's so exciting. And what's next on your your plans? All right, gap year and then a PhD at Johns Hopkins, which is incredible. So that's, congratulations, super excited for you. Let's pray, and and I'll include my benediction in this prayer. Most gracious God, we gather in celebration of the achievement of this graduate, thankful for her journey that has brought her to this milestone. Bless Sierra with the courage and the open heart as she steps forward into new chapters of her life. Guide her path with your wisdom and love, helping her to navigate the challenges and opportunities that lie ahead. May she use her knowledge and skills to uplift others and contribute uh, positively to the world around her. Grant her the strength to persevere. Grant her the humility to learn and the grace to grow in all aspects of her life. Surround her with supportive friends and mentors who encourage her dreams and share in her success. And God, as she embarks upon her future, Keep her hopeful and inspired, trusting in you and you alone, for it's in Christ we pray. God, bless us in our time of worship this day and inspire us to follow your message of forgiveness, even for ourselves. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Congratulations. Blythe, if you'll play us out. 